Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and some more core booty. But this isn't new booty, this is old booty. Yeah. So we've had this motherboard on a couple of videos now. This is the one that makes the horrible bleeping sound. I eventually figured out what that was, and I'll show you again in a moment by putting an ISA card in here. I can get a message on the screen that basically tells me it's looking for a floppy disk and that the BIOS checksum is wrong. Now, the BIOS checksum is basically a way to work out, or rather the software or firmware can work out whether the BIOS is corrupted. The way it does that, by the way, is it just adds up all the bytes, or rather like the value of all the bytes in the EEPROM. It doesn't worry about the ones that are roll over, so it doesn't end up with a huge number. It just lets them wrap around and wrap around. And when it's add up all the bytes, it comes to a number. And if that is the same as the one it has stored somewhere, the checksum, it knows that the BIOS contents are correct. If it doesn't add up to that number, it knows it's corrupted. So it doesn't know where it's corrupted, it just knows it's corrupted. On mine, the message says that the BIOS checksum is corrupted. There were one at least, I think, maybe two suggestions that the CMOS was corrupted. But the CMOS and the BIOS are different things, and this was definitely saying that the BIOS is corrupted. I'll just plug this back in and show you, and then we'll see how we're actually going to fix this. If I have the equipment here to do so, we'll find out in five moments or six, maybe. Uh, okay, so let's just plug this in. Okay, it's booting up. We have a blue light on the monitor, the horrible bleeping noise. And a message on the screen. I'll just make it bigger for you guys. Okay, so BIOS ROM checksum error detecting floppy drive A media drive A error. Now, I am of the opinion, a lot of people agree with me, that it's actually looking for a recovery floppy disk with some sort of utility and a BIOS file on it that it can automatically run and restore itself. Kind of like a self-fixing BIOS. One of the comments on the previous video was that this is just looking for a floppy drive and not looking for a disk in it. So let's try that. I will add that I am actually convinced this is looking for a floppy disk, but we will see. I'm trying to remember which way around these things went, it's so long, I think the... Uh, red line goes towards where the power connector is but if it's wrong just the light will come on and stay on here okay so it won't do any damage to it or the board so here is our floppy drive power on start well the lights come on and it's stayed on so that tells me that the cable's on backwards okay Let's go the other way. As I say with these, it won't actually do any harm. So like that, unless I have it backwards at that end, of course. Start. Well, that didn't flash at all. It says okay on here, like it's been tested before. This is actually marked on here, so I know which way this goes. Actually, pin one, red stripe, goes to this end, so I actually was wrong about that. So we'll put it that way. Let's see. Yep, the light is out and stays out. Let's try. Reversing this end. Because it's not clear on here which is pin 1 to be quite honest, I didn't have a look. No, lights on and stays on, so that tells you that is actually the wrong way around. I do have a floppy disk. Curso de Sistema Operativo MS-DOS. It's an MS-DOS disk. <laughs> Oh, there was, ah, it's a training course on MS-DOS, uh, practical disk. So, 
That's what that is. My Spanish is like a bit, meh. could be better, yeah. Okay, so power on. Well, it doesn't seem to want to access that at all, actually. Uh, but it's certainly not just looking for a floppy disk drive. Okay, other option then, flash the BIOS. I do have a link now to a BIOS file. There seems to be a few different versions. This one appears to be the latest version, actually, so we'll go with this one. This is thanks to uh, Carthor and also Kaluka Luka 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 who gave me this link or similar links. So we'll download this one. I actually already downloaded that one, but we'll go with the latest one. Just open the folder. So it's here. Extract this one. It's here. Yeah, and this gives us a bin file. Now, when you download a BIOS like this, it could actually be a utility, like that boot disk this is looking for, or it could actually just be a BIOS file. If the BIOS files are round number, shall we say, in binary, like 128 kilobytes, we can almost certainly say this is actually just the BIOS file that we need to use in external EEPROM programming. If it's some strange size, it probably will have some sort of header on and then it will still contain this BIOS file and you can use a hex editor sometimes and actually sort that out as well but we have a 128 kilobyte file which should be absolutely fine it is a bin file let's see if my programmer will support this EEPROM okay so this is a 28 pin I think these things are EEPROM just uh yeah, that's too big Find some suitable tool to remove this. It's a bit awkward because it's right next to this ISO slot actually. See if we can get into it this way. Just, yep, yeah, I'm in there, okay. So if I slide this completely underneath, it should actually lift the other end as well without bending the pins much. Okay, I would like to come from this end as well, but it is really not easy to get in down there. Let's see. No. Nope. Okay. Better rocking backwards and forwards. It's out. Slightly bent the end pins. I expected that, but we can soon straighten those up. Okay. What is this chip? Well, we're going to have to remove the sticker to find out. Yeah, we're getting there. I'll keep this on one side, I can stick it back on if uh, I can reprogram this chip. Uh, so, there we are, AM29F002. Let's see if my programmer can handle this or not. So, we'll try the full part number, AM29. Uh, AMD, it has an AMD logo on it, that's good. F002. Uh, and T. Well, in fact, we have exactly there. Dip 32. So let, let's try and read it. Read. Yep, it's got the ident OX01B0. It's read it. So that is our uh, corrupted BIOS, we think. Let's just save that as the original one. And then let's load the one we've downloaded. That one. Okay. Okay, and then we'll try to program it.
done. So, big question is, does it now work? Power on, start. Well, it don't bleep anymore. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working, but it doesn't bleep. Okay. Well, you can say we've changed it. <laughs> we can't say it actually functions, but we can say it now behaves differently. Let's put the uh, analyzer on. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, just peeking over there. Okay. Power on. Start. Well, it doesn't seem to boot at all with that BIOS in it, okay? I can try the other one I downloaded. Okay, that's the other one I downloaded. Let's just use the analyzer if it wants to boot. This one in. Nope. There is a third one, I'll go and try it. This is the third file that was on there. Okay. This one boots. But stops. Okay. Put the graphics card in. Put the ISO one back in. See if it gives a picture or not. Power on. Start. No, so this one goes to C5, but doesn't actually give a picture. So it would appear that none of these back losses actually work on my board. Two don't boot at all. This one hangs up with a completely different code than we had previously we can uh, take the ram out as if we get another code as well let's have a look start yeah so it's bleeping for no ram but it hangs up at c5 okay and the other BIOS went further. I can only assume this is a BIOS problem. I don't see any reason why it would behave differently. If this one hadn't booted either, I'd say put the original one back in and see if it still bleeps. But the fact this one does boot and hang up makes me think that none of these BIOSes are working. Okay, so that's as far again as we got with that one. A bit further, guys, but it still isn't working. What do you guys think? I'm thinking that none of the BIOSes are any good. The one that did work to some extent was this one. The top one, okay, this one. So this one's back on one side. Let's have a look at a bit more booty, yeah. Here's another one. And this goes to prove that some booty is better than other booty, yeah. I mean, some booty is definitely a bit worse for the wear <laughs> okay yeah, i mean this is uh, yeah so from the back the four usbs i think from experience we know these tend to be pentium four machines sometimes amd it's a nicely curved case there <laughs> all this seems to be in place and fairly solid there's no graphics card in here but it has onboard graphics this looks like a modem card. It says a uh, long, long, I can even already pronounce this with a long shine, yeah? Long shine. Okay, on the sticker. So, yeah, I think this will come off this side. <laughs> Let's see. So, of course, I'm going to say it's a Pentium 4, and we will find out in a moment. Socket 478, I'm going to say. We'll find out at the moment. I mean, I don't know what this thing is. It has a DVD-ROM and a DVD-Writer, so 
whole pension four thing seems to be about right but then you can't say for certain that these machines have inside them what they originally started with will it come off well it does come off what we got we've got a pension four a open yeah i think that's probably like the first time i've ever seen an a open motherboard retro yeah. you don't get this brand anymore for sure i can't remember the last time i saw that a open yeah mx46-5333 v two hard drives in this one both uh ide drives so i think we'll get this stuff out of here interesting to see the motherboard works and if these drives actually work given the uh, fact this has had a little bit of uh, grief in its lifetime here so i'll get the stuff out of this and let's have it what we've got and here it is so as i said a open mx46-533v so probably a 533 megahertz front side buzz board so it won't be one of the fastest p4s which are worth some money okay only the 800 megahertz that's just going for the model number but probably what it means the capacitors look okay on this look nice actually rather non-standard connection for the front panel but key lock i think that says s power system power power led so i think power switch goes here and then speaker goes there basically we can find out but the multimeter effect isn't correct two ram and the little uh, modem card so that can go straight in the bin apart from a little bit of dust down here this is in pretty good condition uh, so let's check see if we have any shorts on the 12 volts if not we'll try and power this one up that might be ground that side yep that's fine there's no shorts on this one okay let's power it up stick the analyzer card in see what it tells us and see what it does well it's booting yeah one bleep yeah and this is a good one okay it's a 2.4 gig pentium yeah, if it was a 4.2, it would be worth quite a lot of money. Well, £100 or more, I had one sold it, okay. Let's connect the keyboard and hard drives and let's see what it does. There were two hard drives. This is a 40 gig and there's also a 160 gig. This one is set to master, so I'm confident enough this is the boot drive. The other was set to slave. So, once more, we power up. booting once we go to the BIOS F1 no Dell into the BIOS okay Dell I will simply load the BIOS defaults and then save and exit Looks like XP, I think. Mm-hmm, let's see. Yep. Okay, and we're in XP Professional, but I think this probably has a uh, password on it. And it seems like there are a few of these motherboards for sale. All in this sort of price well that one 45 pounds another one 82 another one 58 i mean this is more the price i would expect really but again because there was some for sale doesn't mean anybody's actually buying any so we go into the advanced listings and search for sold and completed items what do we have well one sold with a processor slower than mine 
28th of March, so about six weeks or seven weeks ago, and £79.60. Yeah, so we can say the do sell and was sold for that amount. I mean, I do see some cheaper ones on offer. This has the cooler as well, maybe everything together help that one to sell. But we have to say that's what they're worth because that's what somebody's paid for one. Okay, let's look at another. And here it is. So no front panel on this one. But this is one of these invests. I've had so many of these things now. Graphics card. It has a additional four USBs on here, two there. Probably an Intel machine. I'm not sure it says anything much. Uh, model Microsoft PC 508. But doesn't give us any other information. Assembled in Spain, okay. Most of these machines seem to be P2s and similar things to that, but I've had some older ones. Let's have a look what's inside this one. And once again, we can play the guessing game, but my opinion of this is going to be a slot one machine. Uh, just the one screw. Let's have a look together. That's either an Athlon or a Pentium 3. PGA 370. So this looks like a P3 in actual fact. Graphics card in there. This is one with the four USBs on. Then we have, this is, uh, it looks like a, yeah, a modem and a LAN card. Hard drive again. Looks like, yeah, this is an MSI motherboard of some sort, MS6323. Okay, so that's what we have. Quite a nice Pentium 3, I think. So, yeah, let's take this apart. Let's have a look at what we've got. And here is our motherboard. So, straight away, we have. Just these two bad capacitors by the looks of it on this one, but we'll need to change those. One strip of RAM. Definitely a PGA 370 this, so it's going to be a P3 or a seller on, I guess. Yeah. Pentium 3. 866. Everything else looks nice and clean tidy this is not a PCIe by the way this is a CNR or communication network riser having AGP and PCIe is very uncommon certainly on a Pentium 3 I've seen it on some Pentium 4 in fact I even have a LGA 775 core 2 board that has both AGP and PCIe yeah, in fact, I found three of those to be quite honest. I've sold two. I kept one for myself and my collection. Okay, so they do exist, but not on P3s, I don't believe. This is a CNR card then. I commented many times I've never seen a card that actually fits in this slot. And would you believe it? Like buzzies, you wait ages for one, then two come along at once because I had one just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So that's what one looks like. This is the USB one, a bit bent there, but probably okay. Hope that wasn't shorting something. This motherboard is now dead. Yeah, so there you are. It's USBs. This is the LAN card. Not really of any use particularly to me, at least. But I suppose because this says Windows 98, it might be worth keeping actually just that one. You never know. And this is the graphics card. Holtec. Yeah, Holtec graphics. This is a Vanta 16M. So that's what it actually is. I can't say I've seen one of this particular board before. So we will find out. No... Uh, 12 volts connector on this so we just need to change these capacitors and then we can boot this one up and have a look probably wants a bit of a clean as well around the slots but it looks like it's just dust to be quite honest i've replaced the capacitors these ones were 1500 microfarads at 10 volts okay 
I don't have any 10 volt ones, so I've put some 1500 microfibers at 6.3 volts. I'm absolutely sure this will be fine on the basis that the highest voltage on this motherboard is 12 volts. And if this was a 12 volt rail, they would have fitted something more than a 10. Okay, so it can't be the 12 volt rail. Therefore, everything else is less than 6.3. Okay. So, a bit of logic tells me I can put 6.3 volt capacitors in there in that instance. Probably when this was made, you know, back in the day, maybe there weren't so many 6.3 volt capacitors around in those days. Perhaps that's why they used 10, or maybe it's just what they had. We're now ready to test the board. Just put the monitor onto VGA. Okay, I have the graphics card attached that came with it. Power supplies on. So we'll start this up doesn't start. I think I might have the power switch in the wrong place actually. I'll just uh, try this. I may have. Let me just check. So it looks like the power switch is here. If it is we should have 3.3 volts. Yeah there's 3 volts on there from there to there so That looks okay. That's what we would expect to find. Put the switch back on again. Oh, I see why it won't start. Yeah, that's why it won't start. Okay, let's just short the two pins. Okay. And it starts. C1, RAM problem. I oh, know, it's going past that. This is where it's looking for the graphics card at 2B. The blue light came on the monitor and we have a picture, okay? So, yeah, invest. So this one pretty much seems to be working. It wants to go into the BIOS. So I'll get the keyboard and we'll get the original hard drive. And let's see if this has an OS on it. Blue light's on, we have a picture. It's an NVIDIA graphics card, it just sort of came up. The uh, Delta Enter setup, okay. Yeah, we're in there. So, just uh, let's go with optimized defaults, yes. And we will go with save and exit, yes. Okay. Mm hmm. But well, seize the hard drive, 20 gig. 866 megahertz process, which has that. A little clip from the hard drive. I can hear it. Making little clicking noises. Okay, something's loading. XP. Oh, and we have a picture of a dog. Rather cute. <laughs> it's got the mouse, that's picked up fine, it knows it's there. Let's have a little look. It's trying to load something one day in 2nd of January. Oh, uh, birthday of Chano 1946. Uh, Birthdays of people in 34 and 80, yeah. It's a list of birthdays, this is. So we have the motherboard MS6323 version 2. And we have this uh, Vanta 16M graphics card. Let's have a look to see if this is actually worth anything. Well, there's one of the motherboards offered for sale. Actually, says it's brand new. Don't know. That's what it says. So we'll take that at face value. They're asking 65. I don't see any more of them. A quick look in the sold listings search. Don't see any sold. Let's just go a bit more generic, like a P3 motherboard. To see if people are buying P3 motherboards. Yes, they are. They open. ECS. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a, an adapter. It looks from uh, slot one to uh, the socket 370. Okay. 
So people definitely do buy Pentium 3 motherboards, but the value of this one, I really can't say particularly, okay? But you can see the general market for these motherboards and some fetch pretty decent money. But we do know with the retro market, it is very, I won't say temperamental, but very specific to brands in certain cases. This graphics card, Avanta 16 uh, PC, uh, oh, AGP, sorry. AGP. Well, there's a voodoo card, so that's nothing like what I've just put in here. <laughs> Why has he brought those voodoo cards up? Oh, because it can't find any matches. Okay, so I don't find any actually sold. Maybe it's something like this thing, you know, NVIDIA Vanta TNT2, maybe. It actually looks like that one, to be quite honest. Uh, well, it does suggest this is actually a TNT2. I can see another number, is actually AVNTB20-16. Now, let's look at that. Uh, and that one doesn't bring anything up. Okay. Well, you can see the card there. So I was searching for this number and I was searching for this number. Looks like it could be a TNT to this thing. Okay. So that's what we have. Definitely worth more than the 20 euros I paid for it. Nothing exceedingly valuable. Depends on what I would get for this motherboard with the processor to be quite honest. Okay, so some car booty there. We did a bit of work at the start of this one and a bit of capacitor changing. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you all next week with some more car booty. Yeah! Ciao, guys.